So those of you who follow music theory channels online may have seen the extremely gentlemanly battle between Adam Neely and Twelve Tone regarding negative time signatures. Now I enjoyed both the videos that they made about this subject and although I joked on Twitter with Twelve Tone about joining the battle, I didn't really have any intention of doing so. But then I started thinking about the piece I'm actually working on composing at the moment and I realised that although it's not negative time signatures but negative rhythms would be actually a very accurate way of describing what I'm doing in it. That's negative, man. I'll get on to what that is in a moment, but let's just look where all this started. I think the initial questioner on Adam's channel was probably thinking about negative harmony, which is this concept that's been very popular online in recent months after Jacob Collier talked about it. Essentially, negative harmony is when you pick a reflection point, say middle C, and for any given chord you can find the negative version of it by reflecting the intervals across the reflection point. So for example if you take the chord of C major, now the C there obviously reflects onto itself, the E is a major third up from the reflection point, so the major third down is A flat, and the G is a perfect fifth up, so a perfect fifth down becomes F. So the negative harmony version of C major is F minor. And this is a potentially useful way to explore new possible chord progressions that fall outside of traditional functional harmonies. It's also possible to use it as a way of creating sort of darker and lighter versions of the same idea. So it was effectively a thought experiment. If that's what a negative harmony is, what would a negative time signature be like? Both Adam Neely and Twelve Tone gave very creative answers to that hypothetical question, but both also admitted that the answers weren't of the most practical use other than to stimulate thought. But while all this was going on, I was working on a new piece. Those of you who've seen my How to Get to Carnegie Hall video will know that a lifelong dream of mine was to have a piece at the proms at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Well, only a few weeks after I posted that video, and completely unconnected to it, I should add, I got a call from the proms and they wanted to commission a new piece for this year's proms. Yeah, what can I say? It's everything I've ever dreamed of. They also said that they needed the title within a week as the proms guide booklet was going to press. That's a really tricky thing to ask without having written a note of music. I probably should have gone for something safe and generic but I'd just been looking into digital audio software and become aware of various techniques used in programs like Ableton Live, one of which was called sidechaining. For those of you who don't know, sidechaining is this process that was pioneered by people like Daft Punk, where a sound from one channel would affect the other. So typically the boom of the bass drum would cause the keyboard chord to reduce volume, allowing the bass drum sound to cut through more clearly. It's also used by DJs to automatically reduce the volume of the music when they start talking. Yeah, this is DJ Dave in the house. Calling out to the YouTube posse. Make sure you comment, like and subscribe. So the idea struck me that this would be a fun thing to try and attempt in a purely analogue environment with an orchestra. So sounds coming from different instruments would affect or cut off sounds from other instruments. It's actually not totally unrelated as an idea to the things that a wonderful composer called Andrew Norman uses in his piece Play. Play is a sort of crazy video game music. The individual movements are even called level one, two and three. And various instruments in it control other ones so they sort of switch each other on and off. So I started experimenting with ways that one line could sort of cut holes in another. I even asked uh, a colleague of mine, the programmer Kenneth Gore, who writes a lot of plugins for the notation software I use called Sibelius. I asked him if he'd create a little program that would do this cutting automatically. With the plugin, you can select one line and it will then remove notes that sound simultaneously in all the other parts. And you can set it to remove the exact length of the selected note or just a specified amount, like say a 16th note. And it can certainly produce some interesting results. For example, here's the famous tune, The House of the Rising Sun. And now here it is after I select the melody and tell the plugin to cut a 16th note off any simultaneously sounding note. You can see a whole new rhythm emerges. If you'd like to get a copy of that plugin, then stay tuned, I'll give you more info at the end.
There is another way you can approach this cutting out idea, which is to create a rhythm or a melody line and generate a second rhythm out of the gaps in the first line. And this, in a very real sense, is a negative rhythm. Just as a negative in the camera film reverses the image so that all the blacks are whites and all the whites are black, so the negative rhythm reverses the sound and the silence of the first line. Wherever there's sound, it becomes silence, and wherever there's silence, it becomes sound. And here's an example from the still unfinished piece, which I probably shouldn't be showing you. I have this idea in various instruments. You can see it has just a few short rests within it. So if I just fill in those rests with another instrument, I generate an entirely new rhythm. probably hear what often happens is that the rhythms feel quite close to traditional or world music and I think a lot of this could be down to the fact that percussionists will effectively do the same thing when they hop from one conga to the next or from the hi-hat to the snare drum uh, when one instrument's playing the other's not and vice versa. I was hoping to do a bit more research on this but I do need to get back to that proms piece which has the deadline of <coughs> hopefully we can look at this a bit more in a future video. Before I go though, I'd like to introduce you to my new Patreon page. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, you can help me make them something sustainable by contributing as little as a dollar a month. You get access to the exclusive Patreon feed where I'll talk more about what I do both in creating these videos and in my composing life. And there'll be a few uh, behind the scenes extras like some a few videos and pictures. And I'd like to offer the first 10 people that sign up a signed copy of either my Gumboots CD with Julian Bliss and the Carducci Quartet or the Eye of Night CD with the Myriad Trio. Just drop me a line in Patreon after you've joined if that's something you're interested in. I'll also put a link to the Sibelius plugin I mentioned on the Patreon feed. Thanks very much for watching. Please let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts about negative rhythms. Please like, subscribe and share with your friends and I'll see you next time. <laughs>